So it is a challenge to preach on such a well-known story. How many times have you heard the story of Jesus asleep in a boat during the storm? Of Jesus' self-assurance contrasted with the panic of his followers in the midst of hard times and rough seas. I know this story, but every time I hear it again, I am filled with the contradictory notions of both hope and the power of God to still the raging seas and of understanding how those apostles must have felt. The wind is howling and the boat is, as it says, swamped, already filling with water. An unpleasant death is approaching and it seems like your savior is sleeping through the peril. Fear grips you, and in that moment you forget your faith in the immediacy of the waves beating against your boat. How often are we in the position of those followers of Jesus, forgetting our connection with God when that connection is most strained by fear in our own mortality? Even scarier, speaking to who we are as humans and our lack of understanding of the ways the divine intercedes in our lives. Sometimes the seas are not stilled. At times, the storm overtakes us. And we find ourselves struggling to keep our heads above the waters. Sometimes our fears come to pass. What are we to make of God in those moments when our hopes go unanswered? To say that God's workings are mysterious is of no help when we are struggling. Those times when we need assurance that we are not alone, at those times we need to be reminded that faith is a practice. Let me say that again, faith is a practice. Faith is reinforced through our actions and our trust in the divine workings of the universe. We have to practice walking in faith. We have to practice living in faith. And as hard as it may be, we have to practice accepting loss in faith. Loss, fear, peril, these are all parts of what it means to be alive and what it means to hold to God in those moments when we are overtaken. Perhaps this is the lesson meant for the apostles and for us. Maybe the call for stillness and quietude was meant for Jesus' followers as well as the storm. In the face of overwhelming catastrophe, there are times when all we can do is bear witness. All we can do is allow our faith to breathe into the space of our fears. We have to practice quieting our fears in the presence of death and loss. We have to practice stillness in the whirlwind surrounding us. Today's psalm tells us that the Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you, for you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Even in the most dire of circumstances, we can learn the practice of depending on God to help us withstand the howling winds. We can cling to God knowing that we are heard, we are seen in the heart of the divine. Jesus teaches us that we are not alone, especially in those moments when our voice is taken by the wind, our cries are still heard. Psalm 9 continues, O oh Lord, you are the one who lifts me up from the gates of death so that I may recount all your praises and rejoice in your deliverance. We cannot help experiencing our fears. Why are you afraid? You are afraid because you are only human in this created world filled with harms and disappointments. We are afraid because in times when we need it most, we tend to forget our faith and our joy in the presence of God. This is why it's so important to continually practice faith, to let faith suffuse us with the knowledge that there is more at work than what is befalling us. Our hope is there right beside us. Our hope knows of the winds beating against us. We can take strength from that hope. We can hold on to our peace in the midst of the high waves. I don't know about you, but I have been walking in fear over the past few months. 
with the elections coming up. I live in fear for the future of this country, for the coming storm and what it could mean for those I hold dear. I see the world in turmoil and wonder at both the inhumanity of war and the resilience of those with their backs against the wall. So much seems to be at stake and so much depends on people who have forgotten their humanity. The psalmist pleads, put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are only human. Humanity must be practiced just as our faith must. Our loves and fears speak to what we value in this world, but we must always ask where our fears are coming from and ask if our faith may be the answer to what troubles us. At times, we simply have to believe in the God of the Psalms to lift us from the pits. At times, we have to expect Jesus to speak into the winds a simple message of peace and deliverance. God, we ask in these times, do you not care that we are perishing? Do you not see our boats filling with water? Do you not see the windstorm battering us and the intense storms gathering on our horizon? threatening us with even more pain and loss. I've had times in my life when it seemed that I could not be seen, when my cries could not be heard above the whirlwind. Yet in every turn, God has been there with me. Even in those times when I could not understand, God has been there with me. I know this because I know the God that we serve. God loves us because we are only human. They know our fears and our joys and understand when we are on the precipice of catastrophe. Practicing faith is hard in a world filled with fears, but the heart of our faith is a God who cares, who wants us to thrive. We can find peace, stillness, and a love which never fails. Over the past three weeks and over the next two months, I will be engaged in clinical pastoral education at Northwestern Hospital in downtown Chicago. I've already pulled several 12-hour shifts doing rounds in the hospital and visiting patients on the edge of their faith and on the edge of their lives. As I daily confront death and dying, the catastrophes which help to shape what it means to be human, I find faith challenged in the storm. Often as a chaplain intern, I'm called upon to be a calming presence as the seas crash and the wind screams. In those times, I find myself clinging to God as a stronghold, as a place of reassurance that can ground my fears and pain. I am called upon to practice faith in service of not just others, but in service of my own wrestling with the winds of fate and mortality. I remind myself to practice what the great teacher taught us as he rested in the drowning boat. Faith as practice is hard, and we all will experience times when our faith is dulled by life, but God is there. God is there when we sail through the storm with the faith and knowing that all things must pass, and this too shall pass. I know that everyone here in some way has experienced the fullness of faith in times of great distress, just as I know that our faith will be tested in the future. We are only humans and are bound by our humanity. We will face change and all change involves loss. I want to assure you that even in those deep losses, God is there as the eye of the storm. That moment of rest and resilience in the midst of the storm is God reaching out for us and raising us from the destruction of hopelessness. God is our stronghold. Our fears are great, but they are not as great as the God we came here today to praise. I won't keep you much longer, but I wanted to share with you a short poem by Robert Frost. Frost tends to be overlooked or reduced to a few key poems, but he holds great wisdom, I think, for our modern age. Frost once remarked that hope is not found in a way out, but a way through. A fitting quote for how we think of God working in our times of trouble and holding us in the storm. 
Frost is, above all, a poet who notices that hope is an important practice. This is a poem called Peril of Hope. It is right there, betwixt and between the orchard bare and the orchard green, when the boughs are right in a flowery burst of pink and white that we fear the worst. For there is not a climb, but at any cost, we'll take that time for a night of frost. Even in the midst of flowering, we can sense fate or fear or however you want to define loss coming to take what has been hard won. Just as we know that our flourishing is always subject to our next fear, the next change that holds danger. It's when the bowels are right that we fear the worst. Why are you afraid? Because life has conditioned you to live into the next fear rather than living into the faith that brought such rest to Jesus Christ. In the coming weeks, in the coming times of change, loss, and fear, I want you to remember Jesus as an island of peace in the middle of the tempest. Ask yourself, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And remember that Jesus speaks into the storm when we cannot. When we are overwhelmed and tossed about, our faith is in the one who came in our behalf and in our humanity. We can always take refuge in God as the maker of this world and as the stronghold of our faith. Practice your faith as a response to your fears and the unknowns that keep you up at night. Find rest when you can and rest peacefully knowing that you are never alone. Hope is not found in a way out, but a way through. Or as the psalmist wrote, those who know your name put their trust in you for you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. As I leave you this morning, I just want to take the time to thank High Park Union Church once again for the space to write my way into my calling. High Park is an amazing neighborhood and this church uniquely serves it. I thank God for High Park Union Church and I thank God for the practice of faith rejuvenated in a time of peril. Amen. <laughs>